Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm filming my most requested video right now and that is a tour of my plants. So I'm going to take you through the house and show you some of my favorites, some of my big plants, the highlights. I'm also going to give you some of the tips that I've learned along the way. Let's go ahead and get started though with my first plant and this is my palm. This is one that I keep in the living room so it's a little bit worse for wear. We definitely have a lot of traffic in this area and the kids are always playing in here so some of the leaves are a little bit broken, but it's actually doing pretty well. This one I do keep right by our windows here behind the couch, so it definitely gets a lot of indirect light. Nothing like super bright, but I do keep it by the window and usually I have the shade drawn, so it's getting a lot of light. I do try and water my plants, like to know if I need to water them, I'll usually stick a finger in the first inch of soil, and then if they're dry, then I'll water them. If not, then I'll give it a little bit more time. This one I would say is probably like moderate need for water. I do try to keep it more watered than like the cacti or succulents. But other than getting bumped by the kids constantly, he seems pretty happy. Over here we've got a couple of my avocado plants. Now these I actually grew from seed. Um, my friends Evan and Amanda, they have a video on how you can grow your own avocado plant from seed. So check that out. I did the same method, one with little toothpicks and putting it in water. This one here is planted in soil, and then this one over here is still in water in the growth cycle. It's got a ton of roots, so any moment now I can plant this one in soil too, but I just haven't done it yet. But this one here, I'm not sure what exactly is going on. It's a little bit crispy on the leaves. It seems like maybe it got too much sun, but it definitely didn't, so I'm still troubleshooting that one. This one, though, has the really nice lush leaves that this one used to have. Up on our bookshelf, this is actually Evan and Amanda's plant. I think this guy is like two or three years old and he is huge. He's got two separate branches going up. This one's like the biggest avocado plant that I've ever seen grown from seed at, like at home. So that one's pretty cool. Um, they've also got a pineapple, which I'll show you a couple of mine a little bit later. This one here is like a spiny succulent. I got this one from my friend Sue. When they were moving, they had to get rid of a bunch of plants. So got that one. And then this one here is also Evan and Amanda's. It's a little jade plant, kind of in the succulent family. And I've got a couple of those upstairs as well. Also, I almost forgot to mention this little succulent right here, but this is one of my favorites. Um, I got this just from our local hardware store, and then this little pot I got on Amazon. So cute. I think this was like, it was a pack of two or three. And the neat thing about these little succulents is if you take off one of these little leaves or one gets bumped off, you can just set them on top of soil, and then they eventually grow roots, and you've got a whole nother succulent plant. So when we go upstairs, I'll show you a few that I actually grew off of plants like this. Next up, we've got some plants here in the kitchen, just behind the sink on the windowsill. This right here is called Mother-in-Law's Tongue. I really love the look of this one, and it actually has an extra little sprout kind of coming off. So these ones definitely, like you start with one and then they make more and more and more. Originally I bought one in our hardware store, and I've ended up, I've got three big plants, and now there's like a fourth little baby plant. And it's kind of neat to just kind of be growing your own new plants. Also, these ones are awesome because they definitely help purify and clean the air. In particular, mother-in-law's tongue filters out formaldehyde and also benzene. So those are definitely really nice to have in the home, especially since we've got a lot of recirculated air. It's good to have plants in here to clean the air. And then over here, this is my aloe vera plant. I've got a couple of these in our house. Aloe vera is really great if you've got any kind of burns or cuts and scrapes and just skin healing. So I really like to have that. And you can just, you know, clip off an entire leaf or even just a section of it for whatever you need it for. I really like to have it on hand, plus it just looks so cute. Over here on the other side of the sink, I've got some just cilantro. I keep our herbs just on the windowsill here and some water. And then this is another variety, similar to the mother-in-law's tongue. This one's called a snake plant. Um, these ones really, I would say these require the least maintenance of all the plants that I have. You can leave these for like two weeks, no water, and I think they actually prefer that. So I really let these ones get very, very dry. I probably water them maybe like every week or week and a half during the winter when we've got all the heating on. But they really do like getting dried out. You want to make sure the soil is completely dry before you add them. Like They hate having their feet wet, so definitely let those ones dry out. Now we're downstairs in our little piano room, kind of by our back patio. And I've got another one of these mother-in-law tongue plants. This is actually one that was propagated from that other plant that I showed you guys in the beginning. Like I said, I've got three and now four with that little baby. Um, again, doesn't like much water, definitely underwater these. Next up over here, this is my newest plant. This is my newest baby, although he's one of the biggest. This is Phil. Um, this is the fiddle leaf fig. I actually picked this one up, you guys would have seen in a recent vlog. I found this at Costco, of all places. And I love him so much, but I'm so nervous because he's got these little brown spots kind of around the edges of the leaves. From the research I've done, I think it might be because we've got a lot of warm, dry air because it's the middle of winter right now, 
or maybe I need to mist them a little bit more. But they do say if you've got like black or brown spots on your fiddle leaf fig, it could be because of a bacteria or a fungal thing. So I'm kind of up in the air. He's so new. I'm trying to take care of him. I think I definitely need to get him in a pot really soon. Just do a repot. He's got a lot of um, little roots coming through the base too, like out the little drain hole. So I'm definitely still working on him, but I know fiddle leaf figs like a lot of bright indirect light. So having him by the door, I think is really good. And I've been trying to mist him at least every other day too. On my left over here, this is my lime tree. This is actually a key lime plant. And up towards the top, there's a ton of little blossoms. I don't know if he's gonna produce anything until I can get him outside like during the springtime because they do like to cross pollinate and we need those bees. But my lemon trees last year, they totally produced so much. I was really amazed how much we could get here in Oregon from like lemon trees. I'm really excited to get him outside. Uh, another feature about the lime plants, which is a little bit annoying having them as an indoor plant, but notable, is they have these little prickly spines, which the lemon trees don't have, but these lime trees, they have that. If it gets much taller, I'll probably have to prune him so he doesn't go, you know, above the door here, up to the ceiling, but I really do like the height that he's at right now. Also next door, I've got this Meyer lemon tree. This is actually Evan and Amanda's plant. And I've made this really cool stand. I've seen these in a lot of stores, but it's so cute. I've had a lot of you guys comment on this one. I wanted to do a little tutorial for you guys so you could <laughs> check it out, but it's really, really cute. I definitely like to put some of my other plants on these kind of little stands. I think you made it from scraps too, which is really cool. And their Meyer lemon is doing amazing. This one was also outside last year and got some cross pollination, produced really well. Um, I would say definitely make sure you are fertilizing your citrus plants. Um, not so much during the winter, but during like growth season, you want to make sure you're giving them a good citrus fertilizer. I did put some um, like compost in with mine, and you want to make sure you're watering when that first inch of soil is dry. Also next door here, I've got my little pineapple plant. This one is doing so well. I just cut off the top when we were going to eat the fruit, and then you put that in water, and eventually it'll start to grow little roots. Once you've got quite a bit of root, then you can just go ahead and put them on top of soil, and then they the roots go into the soil and you have your own little plant. And then eventually, I'm not sure how long it'll take because I've never grown a pineapple from one of these, but it'll shoot up out of the middle and your pineapple will actually grow on top here, which is really cool. Over here, this is my little olive tree. He's my second to newest. So fiddle leaf fig was the newest. Little Oliver here is my second to newest. So I'm still definitely learning this one. He does need a good drink of water. It's pretty dry right now. And he's also super tiny. I'm not sure if I'll be able to like harvest any olives. I'm hoping so. It'll probably take a few years to get him bigger. I'm definitely seeing a lot of new growth up on top here. Some little tender green leaves, so that's a good sign. I would say my biggest tip if you are trying to succeed with plants or you've got a new plant in the home is to just go slow with watering. I think the fastest way to kill a plant is to overwater. So I like to give him a good drink, preferably in a pot that has drain holes so you can let it drain in the sink and then make sure it actually has a chance to dry out on the top before you rewater. Now over here, this is a sad story you guys. This is one of this is my most sad plant experiences here. Oh, my chickens are wanting to say hi. Hi girls. Hi girls. Did you want to say hi? Did you want to say hi? I'm filming a video right now. Hi. Hi. This is Eddie right here. <laughs> okay, you guys can Back outside, back outside. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> That's a whole nother video. We'll do that one a different time. <laughs> back to the plants. So this right here, this is my Meyer lemon plant. I posted a few pictures on Instagram. You guys have seen this in vlogs. What ended up happening with this, since it's so close to our back door, is ants came in. They found their way in and they were traveling to the Meyer lemon and back out. And since I wasn't concerned about the fruit, since we had already harvested pretty much everything, I didn't really think they would cause any danger to it, but I did some research and apparently ants work together with these little insects called scales. And what they do is they, the ants carry the little scales up to the plant, the little scales extract the honeydew, like the nectar from the lemon tree, and the ants like the nectar, and then the little scales stay on the plant and basically they're sucking the life out of your plant. So by the time I realized it, it was too late. My poor little tree, like it was covered in scales and the leaves started falling off and a lot of the leaves were infected with the scales, which are really hard to get off. I ended up getting some neem oil and I sprayed that all over the plant and all over the base here, like of the soil. I tried to use like a toothbrush to get all the scales that I could off. And I think with the neem oil and the little toothbrush, 
I did the best that I could. I don't see any more now, but we don't have any leaves. So I'm really scared for this little guy. I hope around the springtime, maybe he'll come back. But yeah, this is my most sad story because he was such a gorgeous plant. But I'm not giving up on him yet. On a more positive note, <laughs> down here I've got another one of my little pineapple plants. This is definitely a smaller one. The top on this one was not as promising as the other one when I planted it, but he's hanging in there. And then over here I've got another aloe vera. This one we just harvested a ton off. It had these long leaves, but we just harvested quite a bit. And you can see I kind of took um, not all the way down on the plant, but just to about here, which is good too because the kids play down here sometimes, so I didn't want them all over the place, but I really do love my aloe vera. Anyways, that's it for downstairs. Let's go ahead and head upstairs. You guys can see the rest of the plants. And now we're up here in my bedroom at kind of my desk area. I've got two plants over here. I'm not exactly sure the names on these ones, but I've had them for years. This one kind of reminds me of like a jade plant. And then the one back here kind of reminds me of like, I don't know, when you'd find like a reptile terrarium. That one's in more of like a coconut bark. This one's in like a regular potting soil. They really like to be underwater, just like the snake plant, mother in law tongue. And then over here I've got, you know, just a little bouquet. It was our anniversary last week, so i um, got some lilies and roses over there. And then over here I've got a lot of my succulents and the cactus. This one was actually from um, the boys' room. They had that in there. And of course they ended up like knocking it down and almost killing it. So I'm nursing it back to health here in my little windowsill. And he's doing pretty good. He really is. The pot that he's in, as well as these like four that are here, I got all of those on Amazon. I find Amazon is so easy to just search and you can find like whatever kind of pot you're looking for, especially these like white neutral ones. You can find a lot there. So I got these ones from Amazon. And then over here, my little succulent terrarium, I got this one at World Market. And yeah, just got a bunch of random little succulents, some gemstones in there. These two succulents, I actually propagated these from another one of my succulents that I got. I think that one was from Ikea. And then it had some like leaves that fell off and then it grew a couple little starts. I love how these ones look. And then my last succulents that I've got over here, this is just a little set of three. This one you would have seen also downstairs. Um, I've got one from Sue, it's downstairs on that bookshelf. And this one here, I just really like how they look. They're really spiny and it looks cool like with a contrast against the really soft succulents. All right guys, last plant that I wanted to share with you for our plant tour is my Monstera. Now this one I actually found also at Ikea. Kind of crazy where I end up finding these plants, but the Monstera is just one of those ones that I wanted so bad, kind of like the fiddle leaf fig. I have my eye on it forever and I finally found a good deal on one and I had to snatch it up. This one I've had I think for about a year now. It's definitely got some really good like new fresh growth on it, so I know it's pretty happy. And this one in particular, I noticed that it grows a lot of these just like solid leaves. And as they age, they get, you know, kind of like that Swiss cheese look, like they get the typical Monstera look. So I'm not sure if they all grow that way. I think so, but I'm no plant expert. Anyways, I just love how they look. I love the little cutouts. Since we're in my bathroom, I do have a skylight in here, and I think the plants really like that, as well as this bright light to our backyard. I end up watering this guy probably about once every week. Um, it seems like it likes more of a tropical environment versus like the dry cactus type thing, so I think that's why it likes being in here. And yeah, I really, really love this one. If I had to pick my top three favorite plants, I'd probably say my fiddle leaf fig, my monstera, and ooh, that's a hard one. I don't know if I'd say my palm, the one that I have in the living room, or if I'd say the Meyer lemon. I'm not sure yet. I might like the lime tree better too once it starts producing, but Anyways guys, that's going to be it for my plant tour. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Also, check out my latest vlog. I will have it linked up in the cards and down below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye guys!